Hey hey, Marcus House with you here and welcome to episode 31. Today we're going to be doing something just a little different. We're going to build a very small vessel, the smallest possible vessel that we can create to actually take a Kerbal on a ride. Actually, maybe two Kerbals. We've added the lander can there simply so that we can get some Kerbals out up on top of our jetpack vessel that we're going to create here. And on top of that, we've just added the little spark engine and the little tiny liquid fuel tank stacking up these light little cubic octagonal struts just so that we can have a base to attach all the other various little parts to this. We're just going to add two of these um, external command seats basically so that we can transport these two Kerbals around as light as possible with the smallest amount of fuel possible. Just spacing them out there. It's always interesting actually how much bigger the Kerbals are compared to the seat when you actually get them in there. So you do need a bit of space between these on top of this, just to give us a lot of torque and control with this little vessel, we're going to add the small inline reaction wheel. And so that we can control this thing, even if we don't have Kerbals aboard, we can add our Probodobodyne OKTO2 OK unit. And just adding the MK16 parachute there, just in case of emergencies. Now what we're going to do here is bring our octagonal struts just backwards so that our Kerbals become quite close to the center of mass of this thing, just to keep everything nice and stable. And we're going to add the two smallest liquid fuel fuselages to the side of this. Now you can switch from symmetry mode to mirror mode just by pressing the R key. That means you can build things on the sides and they line up nice and perfectly. Just like if you're building a space plane in the space plane hangar. Now the smallest jet engine that you can use in stock Kerbal Space Program is the J20 Juno basic jet engine. So we're going to pop those on the end there. And of course we need two air intakes on top there, A to make it look awesome and B because we need air intakes otherwise our jet engines are not going to work. Just for parking purposes we're going to add the micro landing struts, uh, four of them around the side. We'll just start with those retracted obviously. And we're just going to use the move tool just to pull them in just a little just so that they look a little bit more compact than they do naturally. And finally, just so that we have enough lift to actually fly horizontally without falling out of the sky, we're going to add two of these basic fins and just position them so that our lift and our mass is roughly in the same spot. So that's about it. We'll just use the move tool to just position everything around. Just spacing this out a little bit more. What we're going to do is actually empty our liquid fuel tanks just down to around halfway. We don't need all of this fuel initially. Setting up some staging just so that we can quickly toggle our engines on and off. There we go, that'll do there. So we can just name our vessel now. It's our jetpack for two. We've got Burberry and Verissa Kerman here to be our test pilots. We can of course just immediately EVA these straight out of the MK2 lander can and pop them up straight into our seats. And out we come, Burberry Kerman. After his death-defying rescue a few episodes ago, Burberry has now become our test pilot. He's the newest member of our crew so he needs to be initiated let's say. So there we go they fit quite nicely there together we're powering up our engines now getting ready for takeoff and we'll decouple this thing now and does it fly does it <laughs> yes it flies look at this thing go now Kerbal Engineer tells us that we've got a thrust to weight ratio here just with these two Juno engines firing of just over three. So it, quite a lot of power actually. And this is excluding the little spark fuel engine. <laughs> the small inline reaction wheel just lets you barrel roll like crazy. It's so powerful compared to the size of this thing. <laughs> and look at that. You can pretty much just spin this entire thing on a dime. Point your thrusters backwards and just reverse your direction altogether. I will say though, flying around without the instrument panel is kind of tricky. I've lost my sense of direction. Uh, oh crap. Oh crap, oh crap. Oh, oh no. <laughs> but they're alive. They live to see another day. Okay, that was just a practice. After cleaning up some cuts and bruises, back up we go. <laughs> These brave little souls are putting their lives in my hands, Burberry and Verissa. Let's just say they chose poorly. <laughs> Burberry looks quite excited to be in this situation. Verissa, on the other hand, looks like she's crapping her pants. 
Okay, now that I've got my instrument panels back up again, I can kind of see what I'm doing. It does fly very stable once you actually get moving a little, and what you will probably come to, <laughs> to, come to know by watching me do this is that if I can fly this thing, pretty much anyone can because I'm a terrible pilot. So yeah, we'll do a little bit of a turn here and we'll just descend down around the launch pad. We'll do a flyby of the launch pad, see if we can get quite close to the flag or something like that. And just so you know, even a noob pilot like me can actually aim down here and hopefully we can buzz the tower. <laughs> and it's just going down. Oh, 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 not that close. Oh. <laughs> uh, yep, <laughs> that was closer than I was expecting. Burberry doesn't seem to care at all, but Larissa, I reckon, probably needs a change of nappy. Now, of course, the longer we fly this vessel, the higher the thrust to weight ratio becomes and the better our control tends to be. So you can see there as we do our slow turn just how stable this thing flies. It really is a beautiful little vessel to control. It just doesn't sway back and forward like a larger vessel does. Now you might be wondering why I've got this spark fuel engine. Essentially it's just so that we have a little bit more control if we want to make a vertical descent because the Juno engines actually take quite a long time to power up and power down. So you don't always get the responsiveness you need when you're trying to make a vertical landing. So the spark engine is here just to help. It's not that heavy. You could ditch it if you're good enough to always just land with the Juno engines. But as I said, I'm a crappy pilot, so I need all the help I can get here. Descending now at 45 meters per second. So yeah, you can see there that the jet engines take a long time to ramp up and ramp down. So it's really hard to control just with those. The trick to this, I think, which I'm doing terribly right now, is actually just making very small corrections with your thrust, doing basically the opposite of what I'm doing. And coming down, and... Oh, <laughs> oh, I was so close. Looking at that, actually, it did seem like I probably hit the ground with my engine there first instead of the landing leg, so I might need to look at that a little. Hmm, I wonder if we can take off from where we are here. <laughs> uh, no, the answer is no. <laughs> no, we can't. Ah, uh, we'll launch again. I'm sorry, Verissa and Burberry, just a few more cuts and scratches to add to the tally this morning. With any luck, things can only improve from here. Now, in reality, jetpacks are still a pretty damn tricky thing to create. In fact, in 2014, uh, the head of Google X basically said that they found the jetpacks to be way too inefficient to be practical and that the fuel consumption was just so damn high that it was just pointless even following through with some of the designs. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a heap of enthusiasts out there that just love to invent these jetpacks and fly around. And these jetpacks don't have a very long flight time. Only around 30 seconds or so seems to be around the general flight time for these sorts of things. The fuel used for these jetpacks is generally hydrogen peroxide as far as I'm able to tell, but also other types of jet fuels have been used. We just buzz the research and developments. Whoa, whoa, that was a little closer than I thought. I was gonna say I was just going to buzz the research and development center. That was a little closer than I was wanting to go. What I want to do now though is see if I can land this thing on top of the vehicle assembly building. Lowering that throttle right down. And with the magic of video editing just cutting out the slow descent that I was making there. Down we come. Close, close. I'm a little, a little wobbly. And... Touchdown there. Awesome. So there you go, even a noob pilot like me can land something like this on the vehicle assembly building. But now we're going to head off on a more interesting exploration mission. We're going to head over to the old airfield with this thing. Four more lengthy missions like this one where you're not just flying around the vehicle assembly building. You may want to completely fill up those fuel tanks at the start instead of cutting a lot of the fuel out. You will end up with a lower thrust to weight ratio when you start off, but you'll be able to get a much further distance. 
If anyone is wondering what mods I'm using for the clouds and just general effects that are going on here, the stock visual enhancement mods are the ones to install. So here we are at the old airfield, coming down to take a look at these old hangars. Pull up, pull up. Oh, that was, yep, that was close again. So yeah, here we are at the old airfield. Now this is a pretty cool place to explore if you haven't been here before. There's quite a few old artifacts that we can have a look at. Uh oh, pull up, pull up. <laughs> damn, damn it, damn it, damn it. I expect that even Burberry's getting uh, pretty sick of this punishment now. Actually, what the hell is wrong with him? <laughs> what the hell is going on with his legs? <laughs> Somehow, his feet are breaking physics and they are somehow inside his helmet. <laughs> In fact, he doesn't look that dissimilar to a fried chicken. Can you walk again though, Burberry? Yes, he can. And after a quick rescue, back again for more punishment. These Kerbals really can take quite a lot of punishment. They can hit the ground pretty hard without dying. I think it could be a nice time to try out our parachute, make sure that our emergency landing systems are working on this thing well. Out comes that parachute. Just aiming to land on the top of the old hangar here. Down we come. We're looking like we're going to hit the edge actually. Although we could see if we can fall inside the, the skylight here. I wonder if I can angle my way. And I've clipped the edge there. But I'm in. I've actually gotten in the skylight. Um, I very much doubt that I could do that again, even if I tried. <laughs> Should be able to power this thing back up and take off out the side of the hangar, hopefully. Here we go. And yes, yes we can. Awesome. I think it very well could be the best time now to buzz the tower at the old airfield. Let's see how close we can get to that. Eh, I could have got closer than that, probably. So you can see here, even when we're not flying stupidly, that you can actually have really good control, just horizontal control as you're flying up over mountains. And obviously I'm doing this without the flight navigation on screen, so that just goes to show how easy it is actually. And like I said before, if I can do it, pretty much anyone can do it. I'm a rubbish pilot. Gonna head back down. I want to see if I can do another buzz of this air control tower. Down we come. Getting pretty close to the ground there. Down, 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 and oh no, I kind of, I kind of chickened out there a little at the end. <laughs> hang on, hang on, I can do better than that. We'll come back round. We'll do more of a nose dive at it. Oh crap, crap, crap! Pull up. <laughs> Good lord, that was close. We'll just take a little flyby down here over the ocean so that you can appreciate the beauty of those stock visual enhancements mods. You do need a machine with enough grunt to run these mods and if you're anything like me you will lose a few frames per second on your frame rate by doing that but it's worth it. Okay let's see if we can park this thing in the hangar. The one on the left hand side has got some of those old artifacts in there that I wanted to show you. Let's see if we can get in there though. <laughs> There they are. Did you see those artifacts? <laughs> oh, and Burberry and Verissa are basically standing right there on them. That was actually pretty lucky. So here you can see the older uh, Command Pod MK1, a scorched and oversized version of it, and an old FLT400 fuel tank and an old LV245 liquid fuel engine as well. So these are some of the old parts from well back, like version 0.16 or something. I don't think there's anything at all in the other hangar, but we'll take a look anyway. In a moment I'll show some interesting clips of me doing some massive fails with a jetpack. But before that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do take just a moment to hit that like button if you did enjoy this video. It makes a big difference to the channel. All your support helps a great deal. If you have any questions for me, whack them in the comments below. Thanks so much to all of you that have subscribed. And for those that haven't yet, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video.
action group automatically starting that monopropellant conversion so that's all running time warping there and you should see within just a few days that our ore has been completely converted around 20 days that was that's awesome and another 1.7 million in profit so that is wicked